Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be in the world. Uh, I hope you're well today. Um, and welcome to this week's installation of the webinar uh, program from Martin Audio. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at small format optimized systems. And what that really means is we're going to be taking a bit of a look into the WPM and MLA mini systems. My name is Ben Tucker. Um, I'm a product support engineer at Martin Audio, uh, and it's my job to co-write this training uh, and deliver it, as well as uh, help any customers from any part of the world with any system design or technical inquiries they may have. I am joined today on the call by my colleague Robin Dibble, uh, who is going to be here. He might come in and say hello at some point. Um, Morning, all. Primarily, there he is. Primarily, be here to answer your questions as we go through. So, um, optimized systems, uh, where did this all start? Um, so we've been working on uh, mechanical and digital optimization arrays for over 10 years now. Um, our solutions are the definitive on the market and uh, on the market uh, and offer unique solutions that no other manufacturer can deliver. So, what we're trying to achieve with these optimized solutions is uh, SPL profile control across your audience area, leakage outside of the audience, the smoothness of the coverage. Um, we have this wonderful tool called Hard Avoid. Um, and really what we're trying to do in all of this is remove the trial and error approach of designing systems. And our optimized technology spans now across all eight of these systems uh, from the little O-line on the left there, the whole MLA family, and now the wavefront precision family with scalable resolution. And this all started with the micro line array, uh, the O-line system. Um, and what we wanted to do was use software uh, a bit deeper to remove human error and guesswork involved in system designs, uh, because fundamentally computers are better at calculating math than we are. Um, so we'll let that let the computers do that work, uh, the heavy lifting, and we can be a bit creative with how we want to approach system design. And this uh, computation comes in the form of uh, boundary element uh, methods. So uh, we discovered that our models were consistently out uh, in they tracked measured data, but always differed in what turned out to be uh, a highly consistent manner. So we were missing something essentially, but we didn't know what it was. So when we developed the O-line micro, micro line array, we were determined to find out what was wrong with the acoustic model. Uh, so we turned to what at the time was a large academic uh, technique called the boundary element method. And this allowed us to model the directivity of an acoustic source, as well as the effect of its cabinet, and more importantly, other physical objects around it, such as neighboring speakers in the array. And we found that the simple physical presence of neighboring speakers in a line array had a massive effect on each speaker's output characteristics. And this was slightly different for each position in the array. In the array. So the missing piece of the jigsaw really um, was the fact that we knew what each cabinet was doing individually, but we didn't know what effect that had on the rest of the system. And now our, uh, because of this modeling technique we've employed, our models and uh, predictions are accurate within plus minus of a dB. So alongside that, um, we developed this uh, multicellular approach. And so of course, um, back in the days of traditional line array, um, you kind of really had two options. You could either run the whole array with a single source, um, you could band zone it, so give your top cabinets, middle cabinets, bottom cabinets, different sets of DSP uh, to control the array a little better. And we took the dive even deeper uh, and introduced multicellular, where in the case of MLA, um, every HF device, mid frequency device, and uh, LF device in the array has its own set of DSP and amplification to really give us powerful control over an audience area. So teaming this um, with some software, um, we we set the goals to uh, not only make a great sounding PA, but have finite control over that PA. Um, and the way we look at this really is that um, whereas traditional line arrays um, focus more on what is coming out of the loudspeaker um, and creating a coherent wavefront, um, 
we don't really care about that. What we care about is um, how the audience receives that signal and making sure every single audience member at the venue or the event is uh, receiving a consistent response and frequency response, giving the front of house engineer uh, and the system tech confidence uh, that everybody is hearing their mix. And further with that, with this level of control, what we can do is extend or reduce the audience coverage electronically without having to refly the PA. And this is a really powerful tool in certain situations, uh, whether that be installs where you wish to turn on and off balconies um, without having an effect just by turning boxes on and off, or on festival sites where you may wish to reduce the coverage slightly depending on how many people have turned up for that particular act. And I mentioned already this hard avoid technique that uh, we've employed. And the ability to reduce the offsite leakage has led to some prestigious events. Um, and the fact that we can really target certain parts of the venue uh, and reduce the FPL there by up to 30 dB and further if we wish. So you saw there a picture of Glastonbury um, and here one of the big ones is Hyde Park in uh, the BST in Hyde Park. Um, where of course all all the loving neighbours quite nearby don't really want to hear the sound of a gig happening. Um, so what we've managed to do is deliver that consistent and um, consistent coverage through the whole audience area, keeping everybody on site happy and reducing the SPL leakage off site, keeping all the neighbours happy. And this, of course, has led to a plethora of awards. Uh, but what we wanted to do really um, was bring this powerful technology to wider markets. So we introduced Wavefront Precision and Scalable Resolution. So what that does is takes the technology that is uh, developed through O-Line and MLA and allows the user to define how, how big a cell size you wish to deploy your system at. So looking at the three graphs there on the left, um, what we can do is drive a system, uh, four boxes in the array can be receiving the same DSP, uh, or two boxes, or indeed one box. Um, and what that'll allow you to do is um, have a more conventional line array approach, but still with the advantage of being able to place some optimization over it and give uh, a bit more control to the way your system uh, and your array performs. And if we look at that in kind of um, fruit response form, um, we can see here, we have an eight box line array with no optimization. Um, so every cabinet in that array is uh, feeding the same signal. And you can see the results are very sporadic. We begin to add a bit of optimization now. So we split that array in half. Top four boxes, bottom four boxes are receiving the same uh, signal and are optimized for the audience area. And straight away, you can see the um, audience positions are more consistent in their SBL measurements and frequency response. And there is some improvement uh, behind the loudspeaker in terms of rejection. Double that again. Um, so we now have four channels of DSP. Um, every two boxes, the results are refined even further. Excuse me. And up to one box resolution where every cabinet in that array is uh, being fed its own DSP. Um, we really do have finite control over an audience area there. And we can see um, throughout the audience, the, the results are really tight. And the response, the relative response, we should say, is, um, is really consistent. And behind the loudspeaker, we're getting great rejection right the way through the frequency band. So this ties in to our small format systems, um, because both MLA Mini and WPM are optimized uh, systems. And these guys are the babies of, the, of their respective ranges. So the difference between them uh, really um, is the MLA Mini system uh, houses all of its amplification and DSP inside the MSX subwoofer. You can see at the top of the left-hand picture there. Whereas WPM uses uh, external amplifiers in our icon range. But both of these systems um, are 
scalable DSP, um, and they both have digital networking in the form of AES and the WPM system and any of our WP systems at Dante. Their vertical coverage can be fine-tuned electronically. Uh, we can employ those hard void areas we spoke about. Um, and given their small form factor, um, they're really suited to small and medium event, corporate AV events, or additions to larger systems. Um, we often find people using uh, MLA Mini or WPM as front fill positions or infill positions for larger to complement the larger systems in the range. So a little look into the speakers themselves now. Um, one MLA Mini system uh, comprises of what you see on the right there. So we have the four MLA Mini uh, enclosures on top and one single MSX subwoofer and power plant. And as I've said, that power plant houses all the amplification for the cabinets and uh, in the array, as well as, of course, a single channel for the sub. And Emily Mini can be deployed in a variety of ways. So we can fly it with or without the sub, we can ground stack it without the sub, and as you can see, we can pole mount it. Um, further still, those MSX modules can be pulled out of the back, rack mounted, um, and MLA Mini is also supported on the ICON amplifiers. Speaking of which, we now move over to the WPM system. Um, so this is quite a simple, uh, simplified version in that you have the WPM enclosures. Um, you can pair the WPM system with any of our SX series subwoofers. Um, we have a whole range of them uh, to suit your application or need. And this is all powered from ICON amplification. WPM can be flown. It can be flown with an SXF115. Um, so that is essentially a passive version of the MSX. Um, and you can fly three of these above 12 WPM. You can pole mount it and you can ground set the system. So really flexible on both systems and how you can uh, or wish to deploy it. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look into the loudspeakers themselves. So both speakers uh, are fast three-point ringing systems. Um, as we've seen, there are multiple deployment configurations. Both of them uh, have smooth 100 degree horizontal passing control uh, due to the way the devices are loaded within the uh, cabinets. Uh, the dedicated deep classy amplification, either in the MSX or the ICONs, all of the preset creation is uh, unique and is done in the Display 2.3 software. And MLA Mini um, is a two-way active enclosure, uh, so it's bi -amped, whereas the WPM is a passive enclosure with scalable resolution. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see that by their dimensions. Um, they're very similar in size. Um, there's not really much to it. Um, the MLA Mini is a composite ABS uh, molding and WPM is a wooden cabinet, both of which have low frequency extension down to 76 hertz. They'll both churn out uh, 130 dB max SPL um, with a 6 dB crest factor. So if you are comparing to uh, other competitors on the market, you might want to add 6 dB to that. Um, we already mentioned the smooth horizontal um, 100 degree pattern control, and each cabinet is. Uh, achieving 10, de 10 degrees in the vertical. And of course, this is a random dependent depending on how many boxes you have and the intercabinet angles. And there's a whole, a whopping 0.2 of a kilogram between the weight of the two speakers. Um, so in the heart of it, uh, there are two six and a half inch contour diaphragm LF drivers, and they're located in the side walls um, of the horn. And each, each driver uh, has a solid molded diaphragm which closely follows the contour of the wall and features a load of fractions surround. And, and what this does is um, stops any interference between the propagation of the HF devices and allows that to uh, um, really. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, I don't get to talk much these days, so I've got a bit of a scratchy throat quite early on. Um, allows the HF um, to really propagate and deliver that 100 degree smooth horizontal passing control. Going to switch now, um, in both devices, there are three 1.4 inch uh, near compression drivers mounted on a direct waveguide. 
And we at Martin Audio, um, as I'm sure most of you are aware, um, use multiple small HF drivers instead of traditional large diaphragm compression drivers, which results in less distortion um, and gives us an extended HF response. Uh, the, MLE, the MSX, um, the compact single 15 subwoofer and power plant, uh, again, 500 mil wide or 19.7 inches. Uh, so you get a nice aesthetically pleasing system when you pair it up with the MLA Mini uh, boxes. Uh, we'll give you extension down to 50 hertz, shout out 136 dB, um, max SPL, again, 6 dB crash factors. Um, and they can be deployed either um, as cardioid systems by reversing one um, or just stack them or fly them together uh, to create an omnidirectional subarray. And all of that with nine channels of amplification only comes in at 58 kilos, which isn't bad. So as mentioned, uh, the nine channels uh, drive one for the MSX itself and of course eight for the four biamped MLA mini cabinets. And there are two NL8s on the back of it, for elegant cabling. Um, you can see there on the left and right, and there's a little pictorial diagram to show you which cabinets they should be driving. DSP on board, there's preset selection for a dead kit MLA mini system, more on that later. Um, and it features UNET or USB connection for control with our VUNET software. We move over now and have a look at some of the offerings in our SX series. Uh, we have the aforementioned SXF115 uh, on the left there, which is a single 15. Um, we have the newly um, released SXC115, which is a single 15 inch cardioid subwoofer. Uh, that features a 12 inch driver in the back uh, and is a biomp solution, um, but offers great rear rejection and fantastic low frequency extension to complement a WPM system. And then we have the SX118 and SXC118, uh, the omnidirectional and inherently cardioid offering in a single 18 range. Of course, as well, uh, we have some dual 18s in the range. Uh, we have the SX218 and SXH218. Both of these can be used standalone with WPS, WPM system, sorry. Or what uh, we can do, it's quite common, is we can pair up a single 15 uh, with it to give a bit of low frequency extension and then chuck in a twin 18 sub to really give us those ultra low frequencies um, and turn the system into a three way uh, which gives great um, great bandwidth and offers a fantastic sound to your audience okay we're going to move into the rigging hardware now and what you'll see is a large amount of similarities between first the MLA mini system. Uh, so we have flying frames, outriggers, poles, ground set bars, transition frames, and universal brackets, all of which will allow you to deploy your system in whatever way you like. And if we look at the WPM system, um, you'll see the first five did not change there. And that's because the SXF115 uses the same flying hardware as the MSX and the ground state bars are identical for both systems. Um, really, the only the difference in the offering here is the WPM has a, a dedicated touring or installation grid, um, and each have a slightly different transition frame as their front rear front mounting points uh, are located in slightly different places, of which we'll see now. So we've mentioned already it's a three-point rigging system. Um, so you have these front rigging points on the top of each cabinet and recesses in the in the bottom uh, of the cabinet so they can link together and pin together. Um, there's handles on the uh, side, top, bottom and back of an MLA mini cabinet. And you have this little rear um, rigging link which is the same for WPM systems. And what that allows you to do is select your angle um, by dropping out the bar and connecting it to the adjacent cabinet, of which you can see that working there. So the only noticeable difference here really is, uh, as I've mentioned, the location for the front rigging points moved out to the edges of the WPM cabinet, uh, whereas they are inset a little in the, in the MLA Mini. So some modifications had to be made to the flying hardware uh, for, for each system. And this is that uh, touring frame we first saw. So it is the standalone frame for MLA Mini systems, uh, whether you're using flying MLA Mini on its own, 
with the MSX um, for ground stacking or flying. Um, and you can use it with the SXF115 as well. Um, so you place it on top of your subs in the transition frame underneath and fly 12 p.m. under the three SXF115s. And you pick this up either one point or two point, the display will calculate all that for you. And there's an inclinometer mount for toric reduction. We can see it here um, being used to ground stack eight, eight uh, MLA mini above two MSX. Um, and we've already mentioned that the flyby transitions directly from ground stack to MSX to MLA mini. So the mini transition frame, uh, as I mentioned, obviously uh, transitions from the MSX subwoofer to MLA mini, and we can fly 12 of these below three MSX. And you guessed it, you can do exactly the same with WPM and the SXF 115. Um, and of course, again, the only slight difference being the location of the front points. And that comes in a whopping half a kilo heavier. So here we can see the MLA Mini system in action uh, with the MLA Mini grid on top, some subs, the transition frame, and some PM underneath. Then we have the dedicated touring frame uh, for WPM. Um, so all the kind of same options, you can fly with one or two points. Uh, there's an inclo mount, there's a rear rigging point, front rigging points, and these little ground stack stabilizers, meaning you don't need to deploy that stability bar for um, WPM systems. Excuse me. <coughs> and um, just a quick note about uh, all of our optimized systems, in fact, um, display uh, determines the height of the array um, from the top of the top cabinet in the array, so where we can see that orange angle there. And it'll also tell you the distance between the bottom of the array relative to the surface below. below. Uh, we can see that uh, with ground stacking, um, so same ground stack bars as the MLA mini system. Um, display tells you as well which hole you need to be using and which ground stack bar, depending on the angle you're trying to achieve from your ground stack array. <clears throat> and then as well, we have an install grid for WPM systems, uh, which in most respects is identical to the touring version. But what we've lost here is the, <coughs> excuse me, oh God. We've lost the ground stack stabilizers and the ability to ground stack. So this is flying only and it's great for installations or indeed if you wish to be touring and you're never going to ground stack in your life, um, then this is uh, an alternative that you might consider. And finally, we have this wonderful little bracket um, which allows you a whole host of different deployment methods uh, for up to four cabinets. So we can see there it being used uh, on a scaff bar um, to suspend four cabinets, or we can turn it upside down, put a pole mount adapter on, and um, pole mount the system. Um, you can deploy it both um, with negative angles or positive angles, as we can see there. Um, and what we can do is really offer a wide range of small deployment options for small um, WPM systems. So this is fantastic for those pole mount situations where you just want to throw a quick PA up or for corporate events um, where you might have a limited weight on the truss bar and you're only flying a couple of cabinets, you can slap the universal bracket on for the scaff clamp um, and you're out, out of sight keeping everybody happy. Okay, uh, some configurations of the systems. So um, we've mentioned already that uh, each MLA Mini and WPM cabinet has low frequency extension down to 76 hertz. Uh, this is, of course, um, the more boxes you have in that array, the more control you have down that frequency, but they will churn that out, no problem. Um, and we begin to add some subwoofers to extend that. Um, and although all the graphics here are showing MLA Mini, uh, the same does apply for WPM systems. And of course, we can cross that them. Uh, as we've already seen through some presentations. And one thing we haven't really talked about here is uh, the fact you can ground stack MLA Mini without putting yourself in between. Uh, so if you're mounting it on a stage apron, for example, um, and you don't want that additional height, uh, we can chuck the bar straight on the outrigger 
uh, and get your design array aim uh, without having to add a meter, uh, which is great. Uh, and display offers a whole host of uh, ways you can deploy that. Sorry, ViewNet offers a whole host of ways you can deploy that, whether your subs are behind it, next to it, whatever. Uh, it will take into, into account all of that. Uh, one nice thing about the MLA Mini system, uh, it features six built-in presets. So on the back of the MSX there, uh, you can see my colleague Nigel's finger um, pushing a, a, an imaginary preset selection button. Um, and we can see on the right there some diagrams of how those presets are used. So presets one to three offer a pole mount solution for different coverage heights and uh, three different three distances. We have one for a uh, GrassX system and options for flown systems, depending on how you are deploying your uh, MFX subwoofer with it. And you can simply toggle through and select those presets. The cabling between uh, these arrays are all the same for all presets. And the uh, audio input is set to analog in all of these cases. So just a quick look at uh, some of the presets. Um, we can see kind of how you'd wire it up. Um, and these are all available uh, as a standalone document from the website or included in the MLA Mini user guide. Um, I've seen some people out in the real world um, laminate this and stick them to their flight cases so you can quickly see what you need to achieve to get a system up and running uh, with, without any software or anything like that and get a fantastic result. We also have um, emergency default presets for both MLA Mini and WPM in ViewNet. Um, and we can configure pole mount configurations as well uh, within ViewNet. And the icon amplifiers and the MSX um, offer array snapshots, which can be loaded and saved um, and exported within the ViewNet program. Um, there's also, as well as those six preset selections for the MSX subwoofer, there's six user preset locations as well that you can save different configurations depending on how you, you have run your system. Okay, we'll move into cabling and network now. So depending on the deployment, um, will depend on how you might cable your MLE Mini up. Um, so we've mentioned already that uh, the Two NLA outputs are color coded. Um, if you see there, the orange one um, feeds the middle cabinets within a four box array, and the green one feeds the uppermost and lower cabinet within the array. And with an MLA mini system, you get this lovely little NLA breakout, uh, which is all color coded for you, and a uh, staggered length for the tail connection. And we can see there um, just by running your eyes over how the way a cable is running, you can see that their different lengths. Um, so when the MSX is below the MLA Mini, uh, so whether it's ground stacked or flown, um, a flown system with MSX on ground, um, the longer tails um, feed the upper cabinets within the array, so the respective green and orange longer tails. And rather presumably, um, when the MSX is flown above it, um, the longer tails feed the bottom half of the array. And if we want to deploy more than one system um, in an MLA mini array, uh, one thing we need to consider is the fact the MSX always follows the, the MLA mini cabinets in that the top MSX in the array will feed the top four boxes, the middle one will feed the middle four boxes if you have a 12 box hang, and the bottom one will feed the bottom four. And you simply cable it in the same fashion all the way down and there you have it, a nice optimized small format line array. If the distance between arrays uh, and the MSX is too great for the breakout loom, um, we can either throw some NL8 barrel adapters on, or we, or you can have um, throw some soccer pecs, um, break-ins and breakouts there, um, just to really extend the usability of your system. In terms of networking, um, the electronics in the rack uh, has audio inputs capable of either accepting analog audio or AES3. Um, and one nice thing about an MLA mini system is uh, if you're using AES3, you can send the left uh, left signal to the subwoofer and the right signal to the array. So immediately uh, you can split your MLA mini system from your system processor or console. Uh, and there's a, 
a parallel out for daisy chaining between devices and of course uh, when in the AES mode that is repeating um, so you're not chewing up your cable length um, as with the larger format MLA systems as well um, we support the network control via UNET um, and all configuration data and network control is tra uh, traverses the system via this interface so and what UNET is is a redundant ring based topology uh, that contains physical data so um, one thing one way this differs from the standard Ethernet that we see in most applications is uh, you kind of have to wire a UNET ring up in the in the correct fashion for in order for your system to work. But what that means in particularly the larger format MLA systems is you cannot really wire it up wrong if you daisy chain all your devices um, from top to bottom in an array. Uh, then the software knows that each the DSP is sending to each cabinet is uh, being received by the correct cabinet. Um, the MSX also features a little mini USB interface uh, for convenient connection to a laptop or PC. Um, so if you don't have access to an Ethernet or uh, an Ethernet to UNET adapter, a converter, you can plug in a mini USB here and uh, connect up your system. And then any uh, consequent device that's connected via the UNET protocol will be discovered um, and feedback to this mini USB port. And this is useful, um, again, in those small applications um, where you just want to get the system up and running. Uh, you can load an optimization from the display software. Uh, you can still access it and view that, of course, and make any changes you wish to. Um, and I've mentioned already, devices can still be linked. And of course, what you can do is uh, plug in a USB server, um, such as the Silex DS510, which is on our price list, uh, which bridges the USB connection onto a standard Ethernet network. Um, so also alleviating the need for a UNET to Ethernet adapter in smaller systems. So we'll just have a quick look now at some examples of uh, how these systems might be configured. Um, so this first one is two small systems uh, with a USB connection from a laptop to one system, and then a link across to the next one via UNET. And we can make that redundant by putting another one in and uh, closing the loop. In a larger system, uh, we may wish to deploy uh, the Merlin processor, um, which is a 4 in 10 out audio processor that also features a UNET to Ethernet um, conversion in it. Um, we also have our UHub as well, um, which takes away that DSP processing and just gives you the conversion tool between the two protocols. And again, we can make that redundant by uh, returning back to the system. WPM, uh, much more conventional. Um, and those of you that have spent time with traditional line arrays may uh, find this a bit easier to read. Um, Simply has some amplifiers on the floor uh, and a bunch of NL4 coming out, uh, tailing off to anywhere you might want to go in the system. Um, so we have breakout cables for various solutions, um, NL8 breakout, SockerPex breakouts, uh, SockerPex break-ins to NL8, um, because our distros either have uh, NL4, NL8, or our, our latest um, distro has a uh, link LKA 3225 multi-pin speaker connector on it uh, for driving 12 channels off an OK42 rack, um, as well as short NL4 link cables for your array. Um, and you can see there on the right-hand side, the PWA0057 is uh, a molded XLR cable with the rubber um, kind of weatherproof molding for ink anomalies, which is perfect for outdoors. And all wavefront precision systems, um, or rather the electronics behind the wavefront precision system, has an Ethernet backbone. Uh, and this can be used to control load optimizations from display software and connect simply via an Ethernet connection to a laptop. Um, and all network enabled devices can be controlled on the same network. Um, I've mentioned already that the Icon series uh, have Dante, um, and that's redundant Dante as well, so it can be running primary and secondary. Uh, setups and they all support static and dynamic IP addressing. And of course, um, 
we can expand these systems um, and integrate them both together. So maybe we have a large festival site uh, with MLA uh, or rather larger wavefront precision systems as our main PA. We want to use some MLA mini as delays or fills. Um, we can simply throw in either the Silex USB to Ethernet adapter or a Merlin or a U-Hub um, and convert that network traffic back to Ethernet and it'll sit happily on the same network as the Wavefront Precision System. Finally, uh, a quick talk about some software. So I've mentioned a few times through this presentation, uh, we have the Display 2.3 software. Um, and this is the proprietary software for MLA systems, Wavefront Precision Systems and O-Line. So anything you can optimize is done via this. And what that does is numerically optimizes uh, to define cabinet angles and the DSP coefficients based on the venue coverage you have specified. That's a really straightforward workflow from venue design to the output. And the DSP coefficients for optimized arrays can be loaded directly to the arrays in the case of MLA or the MSX in the case of MLA Mini or ICON amplifiers in the case of Wavefront Precision Systems. So step one. Draw a 2D slice of your venue uh, on axis to the array and place uh, your array in the venue and define your basic audience coverage. Step two, refine that coverage. Um, so we can see there we have some tools uh, such as the SPL profile on the bottom right, which will allow us to set how much we want to um, target our SPL around the little yellow triangle in the center there. Uh, we have our hard avoid regions our non-audience uh, and our audience offsets. So we can have standing, seating or custom up to six meters if you are Dutch. Uh, we can calculate display angles. Uh, so the software does this automatically and will produce the best acoustic output of the array. And then finally, uh, we hit the optimize, let the software run a load of algorithms in the background and a load of math to produce a set of DSP coefficients that uh, match the target goals we've set earlier on uh, and give us an exportable file that we can load into our devices. So that's nice and easy and really quick to go. So the benefits of optimization, um, I mentioned the SPL profile tool uh, and this is kind of what it's doing. That so all MLA systems um, have a default profile delta of plus two minus three around this reference point. So if we leave that as standard, um, say for example, we have 110 dB at that reference point, the software is going to um, ask the system to try and increase the SPL by two dB as we get near the front of the audience and decrease by three dB. And we can control that in any way we want. So we can drop off further as we get away. We can move the reference point and change the profile completely. Um, so we can move it right up near the front and gain a total SPL variation of 13 dB. Um, and it's really a powerful tool depending on how you wish to set your system up. Um, because of course in applications where you might have uh, comedy events or spoken word, you may want a really flat response so everybody in the audience is hearing the same kind of level. Um, and that's a tool that Display offers um, and is extremely powerful. There are also uh, some environmental effects that are minimized as atmospheric pressure, temperature and humidity, uh, which can have a massive effect on their high frequency propagation over distance. And display models uh, accounts for these losses and is critical to maintaining intelligibility and listener engagement, especially in medium to large venues. Um, so one thing to note there, and one thing that's often done on large festival sites, is the system tech will constantly be uh, referring back to a hygrometer um, to check the temperature and humidity settings of the festival site, and constantly updating the the optimization preset and reloading it into arrays uh, when a dramatic change is made to ensure the uh, the array is performing at its best. If we can see there on the bottom um, an example where it's not been taken into, into account and the HF is really dropping off quite early on. Okay, moving on to MLA uh, to unit. Sorry. Um, so every time uh, we deploy 
an MLA system or a WP system, um, we create this venue preset and load it in. So it's calculated the best possible array shape for the venue. It's delivering extremely accurate frequency response, controlling the SPL profile, creating multiple optimizations for each array. And there's no need to second guess. Uh, that kind of wraps up um, this uh, overview of the WP and MLA mini systems. Um, I'm sure a few of you might have had questions throughout this, which my colleague Robin has been answering. Uh, but if not, now there is a chance for you uh, to ask me anything, as well as Robin, and the two of us will go through uh, and answer anything you may have. Nothing so far, folks. You've clearly done a very good job there, Ben. No questions oh, at all. Thank you. Alexander, um, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, the because all of the DSP processing is effectively decided in the display software. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you're using icons or the MSX, um, uh, the MSX power plant. Um, the the obvious kind of advantages over it are the fact that it's only to you, and if you want your ampl amplification outside of the uh, flown system, um, then you can do that quite neatly. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, you can rack mount the MSX, albeit it's rather deeper than a than a 2U amplifier. But in, in, sonically, no, there isn't a difference. Any more for any more? Oh, well, you guys are quiet today. uh alexander they're not the same amplifiers no but they have the same basic dsp design so you can upload the optimizations into the amplifiers in exactly the same way it's just that basically use if you're using um an, ampli an mla mini for permanent installation for example um it's much easier to have a rack mounted icon amplifier than it is to to demount the the msx amplifier from the back of the box it makes it a tidier solution. Well, I think we've either done a good job of presenting the overview of the two systems or I've bored you all to sleep. But, Nap yeah, time, you, clearly. You're a quiet bunch today. Well, with that then, um, Join us next week, um, where Robin will be going through a history of Martin Audio. Um, I don't know whether you want to say a bit about this, Robin. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, uh, I'm working through it as we speak. Uh, so Martin Audio, as you probably know, was started back in 1971, and next year is our 50th anniversary. So we're going to have a look at our products and our ethos and our way of doing things right from the beginning of the company right up to the present day with lots of really interesting pictures of old analog gear if you're sad like i am and like that kind of stuff i'm saying nothing but i will sure be tuning in to find out a bit more about our history um if you guys have nothing else uh, to ask um you can always email us at technical at martin-audio.com um, and one of the team will get back to you pretty swiftly uh, with an answer um, but if that's it, I'm going to bring this to a close now. Uh, thank you for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, afternoon, wherever you might be, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thanks all. Goodbye.